I recently built my first gaming and 4K editing PC after watching hours of YouTube tutorials. So I decided to make this video for two reasons. The first reason is to share my own experience so that it can help other people trying to build their own PC. I will share the findings that I've collated, my rationale for certain part decisions, as well as my building experience. This will not be a step-by-step -step tutorial, you should go to Linus Tech Tips or Tech Source for that. The first reason also happens to be the fake reason, I'll come back to the real reason later. So here are my specs, many of the parts are the top sellers of their respective categories. I decided to go with the Hive Mind after watching Linus Tech Tips and Bitwit give solid reviews of these Hive Mind parts. Secondarily, I want a PC that is reliable and is going to last me a while. My past relationships have made me a big fan of things that last. I also need to be able to edit 4K footage and the good news is once you are able to edit 4K footage, you are always going to be able to edit 4K footage. It's not like gaming where the latest AAA title always push the graphics requirement. Aesthetic wise, I want it to be minimalistic and clean. I'm a little bit too dated to be RGBing all over the place. With that said, let's jump into the parts decision. First consideration was tower air cooler over AIO. I know the AIO looks better, probably cools a little bit better and is relatively cheap, but I just don't like liquid in my PC. If physics haven't got patched yet, even the best cooler has the probability of corrosion and leakage. And I just don't want that thought in my head. A tower cooler has no moving parts because the huge tower is just a conductor and if the fans were to fail, I can see that from outside of the case and get it replaced quite easily. Second consideration was the motherboard. Of all the videos that I watched, I just wanted someone to tell me a motherboard model that will go perfectly with the Corsair 4000D. I saw some builds where the motherboard didn't have a USB Type-C port, which meant that the front port in the Corsair 4000D will be a dead port. The MSI B550 Mac Tomahawk works perfectly with this case. It also works with the Ryzen 9 5900X straight out of the box. I decided to spend a little bit more on the processor since it's the bread and butter of creative work. And with the release of the new Ryzen 7000 series, as well as the RTX 4000 series, this is the best time to buy a new PC. For gamers, you might want to look at the Ryzen 5800X 3D instead. RAM DDR4 is the value buy right now, 16GB for gaming, 32GB minimum for 4K editing. I went with 64GB because this is not money that you want to save since RAM is quite cheap. And lastly, graphics card, I took the old GTX 1060 for my old build since I don't really play graphics demanding games. Should it not suffice down the road, my 850W power supply should be able to take on any mid-tier graphics card. While we are here, this is my old build, and honestly it wasn't too bad. I could still edit 4K with a stuttering timeline and play your usual like Valorant and Dota 2. But just 2 days into using my new build, it has made me feel like I can smell colours. This entire build cost me $2,080 without a graphics card. For the next part, I want to rate all the pitfalls I've heard about when researching how to build a PC. The first and most popular one is destroying the CPU by not installing it correctly. There's a fear that you might bend the pins. Finding the error on the motherboard was surprisingly tough, but I find this pitfall quite unlikely especially for Ryzen processors. The CPU slots in very nicely when installing, in such a way that you will know that it's right. As a pitfall, this was quite overrated, even though every PC building video will mention this. Next pitfall, not mounting the motherboard onto the case correctly, causing it to short circuit. This was properly rated. The standoffs usually come with the case, not the motherboard, and the Corsair 4000D already come with the standoffs pre-installed and has 3 extra standoffs in the packaging. Which confused me for a very long time because I was thinking that I would need to install these 3 standoffs. But now you know, if you're gonna use the Corsair 4000D, you can just mount your motherboard like that. Another popular pitfall was to use another set of power cables for your modular power supply. And this happens more than you would think. This was my first and only modular power supply, so it was not relevant to me, but I figured I should spread the word since I'm already making a video. There were a few minor pitfalls like installing your RAM in the right slot, the second and fourth slot from the CPU, but I used all four slots so not really applicable to me, and using the NVMe and PCIe slots closest to the CPU as that has more lanes. Pretty standard stuff, but again I'll mention just in case it helps someone. There were also a few surprises with this motherboard. Every build video that I watched had the RAM slots with two levers that you can push a push part. And this motherboard only had levels on one side. Not a big deal, installing the RAM was still very easy. 
Just that, after watching hours of video, this was the first time I'm seeing the single level one. Another thing was that this motherboard did not come with an I.O. shield. It was built such that you can slot it into the case directly. And finally, the best tip that I got from researching was to install the power cable for the CPU on the top left of the motherboard before installing the motherboard into the case. Because of all the ports on the motherboard, only that port is hard to reach. I tried to be too smart with it and put all my cables through the case before I installed the motherboard but turns out it just formed too much of clutter and my motherboard could not enter the case. So I realized there's no need to do that. You just have to plug the CPU power one. The rest of it is pretty easy to find its place, especially with a case like the Corsair 4000D where it is very beginner friendly. Everywhere that you want to have a hole to pull your cable, there will be a hole there. The entire process took me about four to five hours, including installing drivers, activating windows and XMP profiles. I want to say I managed to post the first time I tried it with a TV in my living room via HDMI, but there was no signal even though the PC powered up. I took the PC, didn't do anything to it, and then it managed to post on my monitor. Hey! Let's go! If I could sum up the entire experience, it was like getting it on for the first time. You're very nervous and excited, just looking for what goes where, trying to screw holes while unsure of how much force to use. But it feels so good when you finally get everything in and it works out. Now that we have come to the end of the video, the real reason that I made this video was for the internet to examine my build just in case I missed out anything or not optimized anything. Because Murphy's Law state that the best way to get the right answer is to shout the wrong answer into the internet. I haven't got around to overclocking the PC yet, not gonna look for anything crazy, probably gonna undervolt the CPU slightly and increase the RAM speed. If you like this video, my next PC build video will come out in 12 years. So make sure you stay subscribed for that. Unless the industry changes so much that content creators have to look to like 8K or 64K for the market standard, this PC should last me for a while. And yeah, that's all. Thanks for watching. Bye.